bow before you. We worship you and we give you glory. Blessed be the holy name, O God. Be lifted and be magnified. No one is like you. No one is like you. No one is like you, Father. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you glory. And we worship you. As we hear your word, speak to us, O God. Minister to us today. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, Amen. The church said, Amen. You can do better than that. Shout, Amen. Shout, Amen. Shout a big Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor, you're looking good. You're looking good. Tell your neighbor, you're looking good. Tell your neighbor, you're smart. On your left, on your right, tell your neighbor, you're smart. You're smelling wow. What's the type of your perfume? Ask your neighbor, what's the type of this perfume that you're using? It's so nice, man. The scent is good. Hallelujah. Atakama ni jashu mambia the scent is wow. Somebody say hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The book of Judges chapter 7 and verse 1. I'm teaching on the test of readiness. The test of readiness. The test of readiness. If I had a translator or is it interpreter? Is it translator or interpreter? Which one is? Eh? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> okay. The test of readiness. So what is readiness in Swahili? Utayari. Hey, Peter. Eh? Amesema utayari. Aguna kitu Mwalimu, <laughs> teacher, ame kuchekelea. <laughs> eh, hallelujah. The test of readiness. Thank you so much everyone joining us live um, on our social media platforms. God bless you and God favor you. You are most welcome. We are Eagles Dominion House International and we are here in Nairobi, Kenya. We are right in the heart of the city in Sunbeam Shopping Complex, 5th floor. Sunbeam is opposite Equity Bank or NAT headquarters and is along Mfangano Street. There's also a number that you can call and I'll be able to um, pray with you or speak into your life. If you have any inquiry of any question, I'll be able to answer you and God will do you good and God will bless you. Judges chapter 7 verse 1. Then Jerubbabel, that is Gideon, and all the people who were with him rose early and encamped beside the well of Harod. So that the camp of the Midianites was on the north side of them by the hill of More in the valley. And the Lord said to Gideon, verse 2, The people who are with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel claim glory for itself against me saying my own hand has saved me now therefore proclaim in the hearing of the people saying whoever is fearful somebody say whoever is fearful and afraid let him turn and depart at once from Mount Gilead when Gideon made that announcement do you know how many people turned back and 22,000 of the people returned and 10,000 remained. Gideon had an army of 32,000 foot soldiers. And God tells him, this number is too many. Take it down. The number is too much. Please tell them, anyone that is fearful and afraid 
to turn back and go back home. Guys were there pretending to be ready for battle but they were afraid and fearful. So 22,000 went home on their own. Nobody said, you go, you go. No. They were told, if you are fearful and afraid, please go back. 22,000. Are we together? Verse 4. But the Lord said to Gideon, the people are still too many. Bring them down to the water and I will test them. Did you see that? I will test them for you there. So God knows how to test readiness. I will test them for you there. And it will be that of whom I say to you, this one shall go with you, the same shall go with you. And of whomever I say to you, this one shall not go with you, the same shall not go. With, go. Verse 5. So he brought the people down to the, to the water. And the Lord said to Gideon, everyone who laps from the water with his tongue, as a dog laps, you shall set apart by himself. Likewise, everyone who gets down on his knees to drink. And the number of those who lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, was 300 men. But all the rest of the people got down on their knees to drink water. Then the Lord said to Gideon, by the 300 men who lapped, I will save you. And deliver the Midianites into your hand. Let all the other people go. Every man to his place. Father bless the reading of thy word. Now. God will always test your readiness. God will always test your readiness. So as I began saying. That Gideon is going to fight the Midianites. God has appeared to him, given him an assignment, and told him, gather an army for me. And Gideon gathers as many foot soldiers as possible. Because the Midianites, the enemy that was before them, their number could not be counted like this army that was counted that 2,000. Bible calls it, they were like the sand of the sea. And Gideon manages to gather that 2,000 foot soldiers. And God tells him, the number is too many. It's too many. What you do, just tell them, if anyone is afraid, if anyone is fearful, let them go back. 22,000 left. And Gideon was there with 10,000 foot soldiers. And I'm sure he's wondering, how am I going to make it with 10,000 foot soldiers? And God comes again and says, the number is too much. Ah. If, it were, if, if, if you are the Gideon of today, what would you have done? It is very easy to doubt God. Say, so God, there were that two, now it's ten. How am I going to go against this big Midianites and fight them and bring them down and destroy them? How? But watch this. God tells Gideon, the number is too much. Take them to water. I will test them for you. Kabola satayara. Take them to the river. I will test them for you. If you are taken to water, and you will be tested. Will you be found ready? Now, this is now no longer about Gideon. The first batch of men, it was Gideon who said, okay, by the leading of God, if you are fearful and afraid, please go back home. And 22,000 go back home. But now it has come to another dimension where God tells Gideon, this one now you cannot handle. This one is a hard matter. Uh, take them to water. And I will test them for you. Gideon, this one you cannot do it. I will test them for you. And I will show you who is ready for the battle that is ahead. I'm sure Gideon lost all the guys that he had marked that looked powerful. 
oh my goodness, it has happened to me. Gideon lost the guys that he had said, this one looks like it can be a sharpshooter. This one looks heavyweight. We are good with this one. But God tells Gideon, take them to water. And there down the water, I'll test them for you. Hmm. Huh. And I'll test them for you there. Then it will be, verse 4, that of whom I say to you, this one shall go with you. The same shall go with you. And whomever I say to you, this one shall not go with you. The same shall not go. So he brought the people down to the water. And the Lord said to Gideon, everyone who laps, you shall set apart by himself. Likewise, everyone who gets down on his knees to drink. So what was the test? God tells Gideon, everyone who drinks water like this, look at me. Everyone who go and fetches the water and begins to drink like a dog, set them apart. But the ones that go and kneel down, like a go-to, eh? and then they... <laughs> That's how men did. How... How can you be in the army force and you are bending down to drink? What about if the enemy comes when you're not ready? The test of readiness. You can shout and say you are ready, but God knows that you cannot do it. You are not ready. Listen to me. Gideon never gave an int of who God has chosen. God just tells him, take them to water. Everyone who drinks, who laps like a dog, put them aside. Everyone who kneels down to drink, put them aside. Even Gideon doesn't know. I'm sure Gideon was about to choose the ones that knelt, because there were too many. Are you here? 10,000 minus 300. 9,700. The guys that bent on their knees to drink water from the river. 9,000 700 and God tells Gideon these guys that lapped water like a dog 300 that is the number I'm gonna use I, Gideon is are you here don't behave as if Gideon was an angel Gideon is not an angel you see him telling God if it is you you have spoken to me uh -huh, I'm going to put a cotton wool here uh, let there be water but not water hey Gideon, I'm sure at this moment he's like, okay, hi, hey, 9,000. God, you took uh, 22,000 a while ago. Now you have taken 9,700 away again. Now you remain me with 300. How am I going to do it with 300 men? How am I going to fight? Listen to me. God will always test readiness. Many want to work for God. Many want to work for God. But only those who are ready are the ones that God uses for his work. Are we together? Please look at me. Only those who are ready. Many want to work for God. Everyone wants to sing and, uh, you know, be the talk of town. Every preacher wants to preach and be the one to have the power to walk cripples. That's why when we had a visitor in Nyayo Stadium, when preachers were caught for impartation, it was like the whole field was preachers. Because every preacher wants to, everybody wants to work for God. <laughs> Are you here? It's not wrong, whether it's okay. It, it's a good to have a desire to serve God. Everybody wants to serve God. Everybody wants to be used of God. But God only works with them that are ready. It doesn't matter. Readiness is the qualification. Readiness is what matters. Readiness is what God checks. Readiness is what God will come and say, this one is good for the assignment. Only those that are ready are the ones that God uses for his work. Now, many want to work for God. Many want to be great. Many want greatness. Many want to walk in the great power of God. It's true. Many want to work for God. But God only uses those who are ready. Those who are ready to endure everything. 
There are people that, are, that say, I am ready, but they cannot endure anything. They cannot endure insults. Leave alone beating, insults, just being insulted and being called fake on social media. You can't endure that. You begin to insult people. Are you here? <laughs> hey, we are raising a new generation that you will not stand, God forbid, you will not stand on the pulpit and begin to insult whether it's a child or a grown-up person. Did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I said? You will not stand on the pulpit. Your words should be full of grace. That's what the Bible says. Your words should be full of grace. So God is raising. We love our fathers and God bless them. They, they made a way for us and we bless the Lord for them. And we celebrate them. But there is a crop of new Men and women that God is raising that will never stand on the altar and insult the people, whether you give five shillings or one thousand. God is raising a new people. Am I talking? Am I talking to somebody here? That you will never group people according to their giving, you will never love men according to their heavy sacrifice and offerings. You will never tell those of 10,000 line here and those of 5,000 line here. God is raising a new... Am I talking? You don't like me? If you are my son, if you are my daughter and I see it, that you are telling people, if you have 5,000 stand... If not 5,000, don't stand here. I'm not going to prophesy to this one. If I see you before heaven... Eh? works on you, I will have dealt with you cacaboniously. Huh? And <laughs> are you here? Uh, we are not raising a generation that will come and print envelopes and say, this is for hundred dollars. God forbid. Not in this our generation. Did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I said? Take me to anywhere. Huh? So that now when when it's for 10,000 I will come with a horn full of oil and say the ones for 10,000 uh, eh? dollars I will anoint you with a horn and those for 1,000 I will anoint you with with, a, <laughs> with glass uh, before God deals with you I will have dealt with you if you are my son and my daughter are we together? Before heaven proclaims judgment on you, I will do it myself. And I will present it. Be, I, I have that right. Oh my goodness. If you are my son and my daughter, I have it. I can go before the father and say, this one. Mm -mm. This one will spoil our name. This one will spoil our name in the kingdom. Oh, you don't know. Ah, those who forgive, they will be forgiven. Are we together? The test of readiness. Many want to work for God. But you don't just work for God just like that. You just don't just wake up and begin to work for God. No. There must be the test of readiness. There must be the test of readiness. Huh? You want to work for God. And all you see is what people ate yesterday. My, my. You have a problem. Huh? God is raising a new crop of prophets that will not be petty. You know petty? Huh? It's when say people say, God, deeper papa is when you are prophesying. When they don't talk, you are quiet. You are just petty. Are you here? This thing is not based on emotions. If you do ministry based on emotions and feelings, when people don't give, you will not bless them. You will cast them. Be perfect as the Lord your God is perfect. Oh, I have gone to another message. Let me stick to where I am supposed to be. <laughs> it's good to stick to where you are. 
Somebody say readiness. It's part of readiness anyway. Many came to join the army in order to fight and liberate Israel from the Midianites. They were many, but only those who were ready, they are the ones that God used for that battle. Now, in this end time move, in this great outpouring, in this end time revival, the people that God is going to use, listen to me, the qualification is, are you ready? It's not even degree. The government can ask for degree, but God is not asking for a degree. Hallelujah. I said, God is not asking for a degree. The degree is good. The degree is good. But listen to me. The qualification of God is not a degree. It's readiness. I did not squash degree. I didn't say degree is nothing. It is not nonsense. No. But the qualification of God is not the degree. It's not the PhD in theology. But it is what? Readiness. Somebody say readiness. Only those who are ready, they are the ones that God used in, the, in that day of Gideon. It's only those who are ready. Now, look at this. The number is 32,000. And Gideon remains with 300. Hello? Let me take you to Matthew quickly. Matthew 22. Verse 14. Matthew 22 verse 14. For many are called but few are chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen. Can you decide today which side do you want to belong? He said, do you want to be on the side of many called? And let me tell you, there is no compromise about this test. Oh, there is no uncle and auntie in this test. God is not a respect of persons. I hope you know that. He loves everyone. Uh, yeah. Even when you fail, he still loves you. Even when you get disqualified by the standard of readiness, he still loves you. But working for him and working with him in this move, readiness, simple. Now, this is not where you employ emotions. Put your emotions aside. Thank you so much for your emotions. They are good and feelings. They are good. Put them aside. Ladies, listen to me. I know sometimes ladies don't like my teachings. Why, by the way? Because I told you, I told you to remove uh, emotions. Am I to? But I'm not ash. Baby girl, am I ash to them? It's okay. <laughs> Many can come. can come. Many children can desire to serve God and to work with God. To work for God. Many want to do God's assignment. But only those who are ready are the ones that God uses. Please listen to me carefully. Only those who are ready are the ones that God uses. Please, there's no any other thing. Don't, don't go to prayer and fast. To, sh to shorthand. Eh? To, what, what do you say? Eh? To um, twist the hand of God. You can't um, twist him. Please listen to my teaching. Don't say, eh, you know, God is love. I know. Did I say it's not love? Have you ever heard me say it's not love? No. I just said that readiness is what qualifies you. 
Mm. Not that these other children that don't qualify, not that they're not God's children, but God checks on readiness. That's why God does not use everybody. That is why God does not use everybody. Ask yourself why. Ask yourself why. One man was healed by Jesus and he was very eager. He said, I want to go with you. I want to go and preach with you. I want to be a full time. <laughs> Jesus looked at him and said, go back home. <laughs> he was not ready. Yes. Why are you here? Another one, he was touched by Jesus. And he said, okay, let me do this. Let me go and bury my dead father. He was told, let the dead bury the dead. You follow me. But the other one that was healed was eagerly desiring to follow. The one that never desired to follow is the one that was told, let the dead bury the dead. But the one who wanted to follow Jesus was told, go back home. Because it's readiness that God looks at. He will just come down to your heart and check your heart. The heart of a man is deep. Aye. The heart of man has depths. You can say you are ready, but your readiness is a lip service readiness. I can tell you I love you, but lip service. I can tell you we are together. Many told me that. Only to realize that it was not from the heart. It was lip service. Time tells. Hey. When you get disqualified by readiness, it does not mean that you are not a child of God. Those also are children of God. But God checks on readiness. There is no feelings about this. If we are looking for an engineer who has these qualifications, when you come to the table, we will check your papers. There is nothing about, I have a sick mother. Your sick mother is your issue. Can I talk to somebody here? If we are looking for a teacher to teach our children, you don't come and tell us, my mom is sick. I need this money to take care of my mom who has cancer. Now, your mom who has cancer is not the issue of the guys doing the interview here. They are not looking for your feelings or your emotions. What they are looking for, are you ready to do this job? Can you do it? So they will go straight to papers and they will ask you questions based on your career. It's only in the kingdom where we want grace and mercy to prevail. Well, <laughs> in the test of readiness, please, don't carry your emotions. Put them in your pocket. Be ready. You can't bribe the Holy Spirit. Hey. Are you here? The servant, can I talk to somebody here? The servant of Abraham is looking for a wife. Eliezer is looking for a wife for Isaac. And he prays a prayer. And he tells God, God of my father Abraham, to the woman, to the damsel that I will tell, give me water. And he will say, he will give me water. Then he will say, let me also water your camels. Let him be the one. What is that? Readiness. Even to endure. And when he was just saying amen to that prayer, Rebecca shows up. Come on. But is Rebecca ready? Yes. <coughs> and Eliezer tells Rebecca, can I have some water to drink? And Rebecca says, I will also water your camels. And Eliezer stands aside and he's quiet. And he's praising God in the heart. Not openly you. God will never show you. Hey, there are some moments when God is quiet and watching you. Can you do it? There are moments when God is not saying, my daughter, my friend, eh? clapping for you. Sometimes when you are clapped for so much and too much, you become a Elizabeth. You become a tick. You become a daughter and a son in the house who cannot be rebuked 
when you are rebuked to go away for one month. Huh? Don't like me. The servant Eliezer steps aside and is watching Rebecca as Rebecca is watering the camels. What is that? The man made a prayer of readiness. Whoever is ready to become the wife of the son of my father, my servant, my, my master Abraham, let him be. Are you here? There was no negotiation about it. There was nothing like beauty. Beauty was there, yes, but readiness. Whoever will water these camels. You know how many they were? They were 10. This guy had 10 camels. Do you know one camel takes um, how many liters? Somebody check for me quickly. One camel takes how many liters? Quickly. Quickly. Sorry, I didn't do it. was all part of my, my preaching today. It just came. It was all part of my lecture. Quickly, quickly. How many liters? Eliezer is watching a girl, a beautiful girl, fetching water and, and watering the camels. Ten good camels. How many liters of water do you need a camel to drink? It just came. I don't know. Yes, how many? 75 to 150 liters. One camel. Wow. Do you agree? Does, does your research agree with us? 75 to 150? There's a number I'm looking for because I, I ever checked about that one time ago. Okay, let's do with 150. 150 liters. Do you know? Do you know how much is 150 liters? <laughs> yeah? Yeah? Let's work with the liters. Yes? How many liters? 200. Yes, that's right. 200 liters. 200. 200. You've, you've checked, you have researched this 200 on Google. Now, 200 liters times 10. 10 camels. 2,000 liters. One beautiful damsel. One by the name Rebecca. Maku is not tap water like our days. It was not tap water. It was a well. Where are you? Watch this. Rebecca has to throw down the vessel and is, she's busy. Are you here? Are you here? One camel, 200 liters of water. Can you do it? 200 liters. Okay. You are used to the 20 liter jerry can. Uh -huh. Divided by 20. 200 divided by 20. Let me help. Uh -huh. 200 divided by 20. It should be 50. Emma. It should be 100. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 10. 10 times 20. Ah, yes. So, 20 jerrycans eh? for one camel times 10 200 hey hey you can you fetch you let me think a, a liter 20 200 of them watering camels the test of readiness Be standing. Those that are willing are always ready and brave. In the time of Gideon, those who went for battle, they are the ones who are brave and they knew what they wanted. They stood their ground just for God. Just to work for God. They were ready. Would you pass the test of readiness? Now there's a solemn call from Zion. Who will pass the test of readiness? Cry to God. Lift up your hands and begin to pray. Lift up your hands and pray. I say lift up your hands and pray. Lift up your hands and pray. In the name of Jesus, I say pray, 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 make a prayer, 
make a prayer. You have heard the word of God. Don't attach any iota of an emotion in it. Any iota of an emotion is not needed. Surrender your heart to him and tell him, Daddy, dress me in readiness. Dress me in readiness. I desire to be ready. 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 It is for the ones that are ready. Come on. Somebody pray. It is for the ones that are ready. The test of readiness. Men were taken for water. And that is where God tested their levels of readiness. The level of readiness. The level of readiness. The level of readiness. If the Lord comes to test and he is going to test the level of your readiness, will you pass the test of readiness? Will you pass the test of readiness? Rebecca passed the test of readiness. The 300 men, they passed the test of readiness. Will you pass the test of readiness? Will you pass the test of readiness? Or will you be disqualified? Will you pass the test of readiness? Stretch your hands here now. Stretch your hands here. This is my humble prayer for you. That you will pass the test of readiness. May you pass the test of readiness. May you qualify. May the Lord qualify you. I say, may the Lord qualify you. May you pass the test of readiness. Even for me, I can love you. I can desire to work with you. But I can only receive everyone or anyone that God brings to my hand as a son. This one is ready. God can prepare you, but are you ready? God can prepare you, but are you ready? May you pass the test of readiness. You can be praying and fasting and you want to do the assignments of God. You want to be used of God. You know. But are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Let me start with the ones that want to give their lives to Jesus right now. Then I'm going to pray for everybody. Prepare yourself. If you're sick in your body, I'm going to pray with you. But let me start with somebody that is not born again. Very important for this outer call. If you're not born again, or if you backslid, or if you are not sure, you are not sure about this God. Today, you can rededicate your life back to God. Today you can receive Jesus as your Lord 
and Savior. Today you can begin afresh. Today you can begin a new chapter in your life. Today there can be a new beginning in you. If you allow Jesus in your life. If you are ready, open your mouth and say, Father, I believe that you raised your son Jesus from the dead. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. Write my name in the book of life. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you made that prayer, congratulations. You were born again. You're a child of God. You are a son in the kingdom. You are a daughter of God. You are saved. Your name is written in the book of life. The old is gone. The past is gone. Behold, everything is new. Listen to me. Don't you stay at home. Look for a Bible-believing church where you are. Where Christ is revealed. Where there is sound doctrine preached. Don't stay at home. If you happen to be in Nairobi and is in violence, join this church. This is the place to be. God of wonders is in this place. God is doing great things and mighty things in our midst. And great is his name. Listen, we are here in the heart of Nairobi in Sandim Shopping Complex. Fifth floor. Sandim is opposite Equity Bank or NAT headquarters. NAT headquarters. It is also along Mfangano Street. There's also a number down on the screen that you can call. You can call that number. You can text me. You can WhatsApp me. You can message me. I will speak to you personally. I will pray with you. I will declare things in your life. And your life will never be the same again. Meanwhile, if you're trusting God for a breakthrough, I want to declare in your life in the name of Jesus that this week you're blessed. I said this week you're blessed. I declare the blessing of God in your life. I declare the blessing of God in your life. Your week is blessed. Your Monday is blessed. Your Tuesday is blessed. Your Wednesday is blessed. Your Thursday is blessed. Your Friday is blessed. Your Saturday is blessed. And your Sunday is blessed. The whole of this week I declare the hand of God is upon you. May it be a week of breakthroughs. May it be a week of breakthroughs. May it be a week of favor. May the hand of God be upon you. May the hand of God be revealed in your life. May you see the greatness of God wherever you go. Let doors open for you. Let doors open for you. Let doors open for you. Let financial doors open. Let financial doors open. May God give you more and more in what you do. I bless the work of your hands. I bless the work of your hands. Let every curse be removed. Every curse be broken. Every yoke of the enemy over your life. I break it right now. I command every sickness, every disease out of your body. If you are sick in your body, be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Let your amen come like thunder and say, I am healed. You are healed. You are free from any oppression. You are the blessed of the Lord. You are the favor of God. Silver and gold is your portion. If you are trusting God for clients, if you are trusting God for customers, may there be abundance, may there be overflow. In the name of Jesus, I bless your business. I declare you are going far. I declare you are going far. You are the head and on the tail. You are the head and on the tail. In whichever field you are, in the marketplace, you are the head and on the tail. In the name of Jesus, whoever has been fighting you secretly, God will expose them. And God is fighting your battles. And God is putting you at the top. In Jesus' name. Put your hands together for Jesus. 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 Lift up your hands again to bless. May God bless you. To bless. 
may God bless you. To bless, may God bless you. May the nations call you blessed. May even the Ethan call you blessed. May men and women out there call you blessed. In the name of Jesus. Whatever you choose to do, I declare favor. Like Joseph, favor. 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 Receive favor. And common favor. Favor. And common favor. And I hear this. Your gates shall be open 24 7 to receive wealth. To receive wealth. I say, Your gates be open 24 hours, 24 7. Let your gates remain open. Let your gates remain open 24 7 to receive wealth. To receive wealth. To receive wealth. I want to tell you the power of that word. When God used that word to bless Israel, today, that time Gentiles meant people of other nations. Today, it's like some of them don't know Jesus. They even don't want to hear about Jesus. But you know what? Every day people are going to Israel. Their gates are continually open to receive the wealth you hear. When you are saying, I want to go to see Capernaum, I want to see where Jesus was crucified, you are taking wealth to them. That's what I am saying. Do you believe it now? When I say, may your gates be open continually. May your gates be open continually. May your gates. Did you believe what I said? Even today, somebody who is not an Israelite, who is not a Jew, is in Israel. Touring Israel. As they are touring, they have spent money. Are you here? They have spent money. They have eaten in their restaurants. Their economy is stable. Are you here? Why? Because God said, may your gates be continually open 24-7 to receive. And that thing remained up to today. I declare in your life that your gates may they be open. I feel I want to speak for Kenya. Can you lift up your hands? I pray for Kenya. Kenya, Kenya. In the name of Jesus. Pastor Eva, come, give me this fog quickly. Yozali, Zambe, Amen, Hallelujah. Yozali, Zambe, Amen, Hallelujah. Yozali, Zambe, Amen, Hallelujah. Let me do it myself. You are asleep. Hey, quickly. Amen. Hallelujah. Yosali. Zambe. Quickly. Help here. Yosali. Peter, come. Hey. Okay, stretch your hands here. I pray for Kenya. We pray for Kenya. We declare over Kenya. Kenya, yes. Kenya, yes. let your gates be open 24-7 yes. to receive the wealth of other nations in the name of Jesus. Kenya, I command all your gates to open, all your gates to open to receive the wealth yes. of other nations in the name of Jesus. It is done. Yes. Kenya is blessed. Kenya is blessed. I say Kenya is blessed. Yes. You are blessed too. Amen. You are blessed too. Amen. And favor of God. Amen. I say you are blessed. Amen. And favor of God. Yes. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Yes. 
Put your hands together for Jesus. Yes. In Jesus' name. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. God favor you. I love you. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.